Hi folks, my name is Dale Smith. I'm a captain caricaturist and I'm a tutor at East Kilbride Art Centre. So this is the last episode in the uh, development stage of doing the watercolours. Um, so we've done six episodes and this is the final one now born. Um, you'll see me talk about lighting effects, shadows and really enjoying the, the full process. So hopefully you enjoy the video and thank you. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw the outline of Niall. He's Irish, which I didn't know. So what I'm going to do is a wee leprechaun. So first of all, he's got his big quiff. So we'll get that. Talked about in the past sessions, the previous five episodes of the cartoons and caricatures, you really want to sort of find a focal point. and then use that to really sort of capture the likeness. So now he's got a sort of new baby face as well. So obviously it's quiff. So I'm going to just sketch it out in pencil first. And then what I'll do is I'll then lay it out with my markers. So Mention of the leprechaun, so I won't put a hat on because it will spoil the look of his hair. So, what I'll do is I'll do it with a wee four leaf clover behind his ear. There we go. Right, let's get his wee outfit. So, we'll do him sort of doing a side kick. Jazz hands as well. So you'll notice that I've got a picture of Niall on my phone, so it's always good to have your reference material beside when you're drawing. I always do that myself. Make sure I do have some reference points. Use his jazz hands. And then we'll do his legs. So he bent buckle. And his legs. Run out of space. So just do me 10 legs. So I'll actually add value to the joke. Comedy value, the big bubble head, and then we tear the legs, the big hands, do we buckles on his shoes? Do we pocket? And then obviously because there's a wee leprechaun, we'll set him in a wee sort of country scene, some wee trees. You'll notice I've left his face, so I'll spend a wee bit more time in that. So, the uh, rainbow. He certainly has when he's pot of gold, hasn't he? He's very popular now. I don't know, was he in a, a band? Before he did his soul career. Maybe one of these could put that in the comments in the, the YouTube channel. He's got his big bags under his eyes. He's got a gear. Button nose. Big bum chin. There we 
Ho. I think we'll make his cuff even bigger. When we come down. Nothing set in stone, we're just still doing a sketch. Just finding our way in the picture. So we'll just start with the next section and what we'll do is we'll just ink them up. So we'll just follow my guidelines, a lot of the guidelines will lose when they're about. Now you will have your shark in your pack. So just outlining your picture. Make any revisions to your your sketch, so I'm just altering some of the lines as well. Some of the detail will go in with a thinner marker as well, so I'm going to drop every single detail just now. He's definitely had that. His eyebrows plucked. Got a good shape. So just enjoy your drawing, relax, take your time. Living in these spaces. Through to the sky. 
Now I'm just going to step down to my thinner Sharpie. Well, it's actually, sorry, it's a Uniball pen. This is when it starts to put in more detail. Just doing some more detail in his eyes. Mentioned earlier, I'll be just going like these. Big bags under his eyes. So I've done these bags under his eyes with the thin marker and then I'm just going around all the detail. Some branches in a tree. Don't forget the tree trunk. I think we'll need a wee pot of gold as well, don't we? So the gold coins have fallen out. Just going to alter the lens of this seagull a wee bit. Just close. Some detail on his chest and his wings. So there we are, that's the second stage done. First stage is laying it out with the pencil. And there we go. That's them all ready to colour in. So just talking about the the process for colouring in. In this case what I'm doing is I'm going to be using watercolours, so you'll have your pack with all your watercolours, so good range of colours in this one, so all your warm colours, your yellows, reds, oranges, and then, then through your cold colours, your blues, greens, brown, black, and then just a range of paintbrushes, I've got a few that I probably wouldn't use today, uh, 
So nice range of brushes just so that you can then start painting and my water will pick that back up. So I generally start with the background. Get some of these that I don't need out of the way. I'm actually just you'll see there's some colours left in the palettes, but I'm just gonna freshen up my colour range. So starting with cobalt blue, I want to get ultramarine as well. We've got ultramarine there, yes we do, brilliant. So ultramarine and cobalt blue. So we'll do a wet on wet first of all, so just do the wet the area, the work area. So just going round as if you're painting just with water. And then we'll pick up some of the colour and then just let that down now. I had set up this wee drawing board so it's at an angle, it's probably about 30 degrees. Don't need to get your protractor out to get the right angle, but the reason that it's at an angle is to help the, the paint come and flow down the page, especially when you're doing wet on wet. You want the colour to flow down, dilute the paint quite a lot as well for your first wash. Just add a wee bit more water, just so that it flows nice. You can see the run going down the page, that's exactly what you want. And what will happen, because we've wet this area, the paint will find it difficult to sort of go into the, the areas that are dry. So you're creating a sort of natural mask. You can use masking fluid if you want, but when you're doing a nice wee sketch like this, it's probably probably not needed. So I'll just really st stick to using the natural mask now. See the down at the bottom. There's actually still some pigment left in my brush, which is quite nice. So it's a nice soft blue, so I might actually just leave it like this. We'll see once we're finished. Wait in the area, the work area. Now, let's go in with a wee bit of colour, not too much to start with. Now you can see the paint just flowing down that area that we wet. So this is wet on wet.
take your time as well. Always emphasise this, enjoy the process. It's not a race. No prizes for the first finished. So you can see that it's darker up at the top here as I come down to the horizon line, which is this line across here. I'm starting to lose the colour, use less pigment. It's beginning to pull in this wee area here. So what I'll do is I'll just lift that out with my brush and then move it to another area. Quite a lot of pigment in that, but I'll just put in, but we can lift that off. So move it over to the other side. Use your brush to just lift it off and then move it across. Again, just lift it up and then move across. What happens is once the, the brush begin, starts to dry, you can use it as a wee sponge almost. Make it a wee bit darker up the top. What tends to happen with the watercolours is that they tend to dry a lot later. So if you want to make it a wee bit darker, you just go in with a second wash. Again, just repeating the, the process. There we go. Now, I think we'll start in this here. So start with orange. I'm going to just do wet on dry. I'm going to build up this here with a series of different washes so just going in it's going to bleed a wee bit up at the top here but I'm using a slightly different technique so so if it does I can always go back over with a more intense wash in the later stages of the picture I'm going to change the colour of his hair as well, I'm going to put more brown because I don't think he's a true redhead I think he's got quite brown hair as well So I'm deliberately leaving some space as well leaving some of the paper exposed so that's what creates highlights. Pick up some brown as we come down to the bottom in this fringe or this cliff. Just reactivate this paint that was left over from, believe it or not. December when we were first recording the videos. So this is just this is us into 
April. The reason I'm mentioning this is it just goes to show you that watercolour is very versatile. It's not like acrylics or even oils. Once oils dry then that's them, you can never reactivate. Accents, folks. This is Payne's Grey, this one. So it's beginning to peel down at the bottom there. So just going in with my brush and moving that to the top. So the light's coming in from the, the top. So leaving it lighter up at the top and then darker down at the bottom. What I want to do is I want to get even darker at the side of his hair. So more pigment. We talked about ratios of paint to water in the last episode, so still quite diluted, but we're building the paint up and adding more pigment, so that's more interest to your picture as well when you vary your pigment strength. I think he's got brown eyes, but I'm going to make them green. Now I want the leaf green for his new outfit. So there we go, and we'll get some emerald green as well. It's almost dried up in the tube. If that ever happens, just cut the, the tube and you'll be able to use the paint and Inside, right, I'll cut down the bottom here. So, again, just the wet paint on the dry surface. So cut that paint with a brush. The leaf green. It's 
See how that's flowing down the wet area. Just let the paint do its thing, don't need to force it. So that's my first wash, I'll come, come back to that, I want to make it stronger. The colour, so do the clover. Miss a wee bit of the sky there, see that? Can go back in and colour that in. So I just take some excess moisture out of the brush there so I can then pick up the moisture from the paper. Try and give volume to your shape as well. So again, thinking of where the light source is, it's coming in from the top down to the bottom. So trying to make it a wee bit darker in this area and lighter up at the top there, and then leaving some nice white paper shining through as highlights. We'll maybe come in and just go around the lines that are in the centre there. Again, just give more volume to the shape. Now, as we've got the green going, let's get the trees done. Wait on dry again. Starting with the leaf green up at the top, so it's a lighter green. We'll probably put some leaf green, uh, sorry, emerald green down at the bottom. I've got to put wee branches on that one, so we can do that at the end. Make it a wee bit darker down this wee corner here. So it makes, starts to make the jacket stand out. It's beginning to bleed into the, the green of the jacket, but again, don't worry, we can sort that. Obviously you can be a wee bit more patient, take your time, 
let some of these washes dry before you go edge to edge with your, your paint. So we'll leave it to sort of dry off a wee bit. And we'll go on to this second tree. Again, starting with the leaf green up at the top. And then we'll come down onto this sort of emerald green at the bottom. It's a little bit more intense down the bottom, so just picking up more pigment, less water. And then just spot the colour, drop the colour into the tree. I'll do that with this one as well. Right, we'll do the glass. The shavings of the rubber get absolutely everywhere and I can see some still left on the surface of the pad so just make sure that you get them all removed before you start painting. Let me go back and put a wee bit more colour in his eyes. Just getting some of those shivers off with my finger. Do it a wee bit darker because obviously now it's above the glass there, so start thinking of your shadows, mentioned highlights and the clover and the jacket and the hair but now we're thinking about shadows as well back to the leaf green Put a shadow underneath there. Now what I want to do is I want to get the, the feeling of depth in the picture, so I'm going to add a wee bit more blue. That's a bit dark. So it is green in the distance. But I've added a wee bit more blue to see this hill into the background. with my brush but we're okay because we're doing a bean area an area of green I'm 
Okay, so I'm going to start with the rainbow. Now, there's a lot more pigment in the brush, less water, because so, I want the colours of the rainbow to be really intense. Just take your time with the stripes if you're following my picture. See how this goes actually. I'm gonna go in with the orange. That's quite wet. Let's get a more intense colour. Fresh yellow. Yes, yellow next. This wee bit happening down at the bottom here. The colours beginning to merge together. Certainly, the orange is having an influence on the yellow, so I think what I'll do. There's actually really only six colours in a, a rainbow, so what I'll do is I'll do it another yellow stripe. So just 
just left them with a the brush. Really, a wee space between his hair and that yellow, just in case it does bleed. Right, now we get the green. That green's flown up into the, the yellow. There we are. There we go. Get the blue. There's a lot more pigment in the blue compared to the sky, just to make it more intense, vibrant the colour. I quite like how the colours are beginning to sort of merge into each other but certainly, as I said before, if you want to leave each colour to dry before you apply the next one then there's nothing wrong with doing that, it's actually probably better that you do that just if you're a wee bit unsure of using the watercolours Yeah, I like that. Right, now we need purple. We've got a purple. Right, that'll do it. This is quite dry. Again, if it's too dry, your tube, don't just throw it in the bin. You can get it, get a wee pair of scissors and then just cut the, the bottom off. So you would cut it at the bottom there and then you'll be able to get in and then reactivate the paint. And obviously the paints that you've been given are all brand new, so that shouldn't happen. In fact, it's we uh, it's that we set there that you should have for folks that one there. So the paint's already dry, so it just shows you what I'm talking about. Let's 
the sea for this purple goes on. Yeah, I've not added a lot of water to the purple, so I want really the strength of the pigment to come through as I apply it onto the, the paper. Just adding a wee bit of water, it was getting dry. Look at the difference there between that wash that we put on at the start. Uh, you could actually see the blue, but probably on the camera, but you'll, be, you'll think, well, oh, there's no colour on that paper at all. But there is blue, but it just shows you the, the way that you vary your strength of paint. Less pigment means it's lighter, more pigment means that the colour is more vibrant and strong. So you don't use white, you're using the paper to make the colour white, uh, sorry, you're making, using the paper to make the colour lighter, not white. Got there, folks. Right. I like my rainbow. Rainbows always make me happy. Still haven't found a pot of gold at the bottom of one though. I don't think that's true. What we do is we just go in and go with some lines in his hair. Right. Do the rest of his outfit.
Things we bought tonight. Left that wee space in the middle there, just as a wee eye out. Dry, so just add a little bit more water. Mm. Talked about the volume, so I'm just adding a little bit more green. to the opposite side for your shadows again light coming down from the top we mentioned earlier that we were going to do this the clover as well so just picking up some of these wee lines in the centre of the leaf of the clover again just going around the bottom Now, what colour does this top? I'm inclined to think it's going to be orange, but let me just double check, folks. Remember, I was talking about reference material, so let's just check. That's clean. I'll make it light a little. That's enough. So that's enough paint, I would say. So I want to make it quite light. Let's just spread out. Spread that out across the area, the work area, and I'm just going to go in there for a wee shadow. Maybe a minute. While I'm here and there, I remember I'm going to put a couple of wee branches in the tree, and then I'll do a wee buckle. Something else I missed. We get that brown for these wee buckle. There's a wee wee bell. I think it actually, do you know the bird? I said it was a seagull at the start, but I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to, for balance, I'm going to make him purple. A 
go seek help. And do they exist? So we're at the final stages folks, so quite pleased with the picture so far. The main thing now is really just to give the colour to his face. I did deliberately leave the, uh, the face till the end because I was wanting to try to check and see how much colour I will put in. So we can maybe start showing you how intense the colour will be, how vibrant the colour is going to be. So I've got my flesh tone. Uh, that is in my tube, but you'll probably need to make one up. So I'll start with that actually, and then what I'll do is I'll make up one. So using the red, the yellow, and I've got some light there. No, don't have any white. Ah, that's unfortunate. We'll just use the red and the yellow. So I make an orange colour. And we'll let the paper start shine through. So I'm using that with the peach combination of both. Obviously, add a wee bit of white from your your colour range, folks. Now what happened there is obviously there was a wee pool of brown at the bottom we see there, but I'm not going to panic. So I know that it's still wet, so what I can do is I can lift some of the colour off, but I'm actually going to use this brown. It's always got a wee bit of stubble, so I'm going to bring that brown down to the bottom on his chin. For his stubble. I'm going to go back in, pick up some peach or flesh tint. And then just moving the paint. You notice as well, I didn't actually wet the surface for a bigger area. Uh, what might be quite nice is doing wet on wet, but because I'm working quite fast, I'm just going to do the wet paint on dry. Just moving the colour. The light's coming in, I'm, I'm on it. I imagine the light to come in from the the right over to the left. So what I want to do is make it a wee bit lighter on this right hand side. Just 
add in a wee bit of water. And just keep moving the paint round the work area. Now I want to get that cheek a wee bit lighter, so what I'll do is I'll just get some water and then lift the colour with my brush. Get a little bit darker underneath. So I'm actually going to pick up some brown. So we shadow underneath his nose. Pick up a peach colour again. So I want to spend a wee bit more time with the face as well. It's been quite quick filling in all the areas. But when you come to this stage, this is probably the fourth stage. Once you've sort of locked everything in, then you can come, go back in, adding more lighting effects, so shadows and highlights. Maybe adding more colour into the, the, the face reflective highlights as they're called. So actually what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to actually bring in some of the, the colours of the rainbow into his face and then I'm going to bring in some of the colours of his outfit into his face. Just spend a wee bit more time in the finishing detail. Really get to know your picture. Just going around up some of the lines with the darker wash as well. Get his eyebrows. Get a wee bit darker on his chin. Stubble on the top of his lip. Made his face a wee bit wider than the original sketch. Made it more a sort of baby face. There's a wee bit of paint spray coming in now. Just do these temples, make them more pronounced. Do his hands.
Right, I talked about these reflective highlights, so I'll show you what I mean. So green's here, so if we just spot a wee bit of green into the sides, head there, a wee bit in his ear, maybe a wee bit in his chin there. It gives it a nice effect. Let's do the same for the rainbow. That's going to be too intense, so really be quite delicate. Don't go too heavy handed. Just a wee bit of purple in the side there. A wee bit of blue. Maybe a wee bit of blue in his ear. Alright, yep, yeah, quite happy with that. Do the same. On the outfit. Just for the light, because that's quite intense, the, the rainbow, so you'll see the light coming through onto the surfaces of your subject. Think of it like LED lights. These colour lights are really popular just now. So think of the colour of your room in the day. And you see all the sort of natural colours, don't you? Um, so say for instance, a few then in the evening have your LED lights on and then they're maybe orange. Think of the colour change. So that, say for instance, your bed clothes are maybe green or grey. Well, when you've got your pink or red LED light, think of the colour change that you'll see. And it's the same sort of idea that we're trying to do because that's an intense, vibrant light coming from your rainbow. It's obviously going to have an impact on your subject, so it just creates a nice effect. Get a wee bit more purple down there. We'll pop it up the clover at the top. So we've got pop up here. Just thinking to myself out loud, where I'm going to put these colours in. I think what I want to do is I want you to do the same with the hair. So obviously up at the top here we've got nice warm colours of red, orange and yellow. So Let's add a wee bit more red into his hair. And then we'll go for the yellow. Do a wee bit of red in his nose, a wee bit of red. So 
So, if you look, look at all the episodes of the cartoons and caricatures, we've slowly been building up to this final picture. And, and this one here, hopefully you can see that I've spent a bit more time on lighting effects and shadows. And your detail. Building up your technique with the paint as well. It's quite important. Now, I want to go darker than his chin. So again, Unfortunately, folks, so I've just spotted. Let's just play the games. What we'll do is we'll mix one up. So, using a dark brown and a wee bit of blue, mix them together, and that'll give you your paint grey. Now, if you add more blue, then it becomes colder, and then if you have more brown, then obviously it's a bit warmer. So. Let's just see how that goes. That's quite nice. We've got a dry brushing. So we're using this Payne's Grey that I've mixed up. Make the shadows just a little bit more intense underneath his nose. Put them in more intense shadows. We shadow underneath his body. I'm just going to step back for 20 seconds, so let me just look at who's coming on. Thank you. 
And that's a big weakness. But I think for this one, it's more about the process. I've enjoyed the process, I've enjoyed the picture. So don't beat, your up, don't beat yourself up if your picture's not exactly the same as your reference photograph. That's not what it's about. It's about enjoying creating something. Right, there. Pot of gold. So, just really going in with the yellow, and I flooded the yellow across. So, remember, it's a sort of lighting effect, so I want to make that look really bright. A wee bit of yellow on his hand. Oh, the yellow beak. And that's us folks, quite happy with the finished result, so I'll just hold it up for you, there we go. So just a re quick recap, so first of all, sketched it out with a pencil, once I've sketched it out, then I've gone with the liners, so I used two pens, I used the Sharpie and then my wee fine line pen to get the detail. You can see some of the lines still shown. Obviously, the lines of the Sharpie are quite obvious, but the detail in his teeth, they were all done with a fine line pen. And then really started to bring in the colour washes using different techniques. So, wet on wet, wet on dry, and dry brushing here. Really sort of talked a lot about the sort of lighting effects you can see. The green coming through into his face, the purples, reds, so it's all a sort of reflective highlight. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode and please put some feedback on the, the comments and uh, let me know what you thought about the, the episode and obviously looking at the, the rest of the episodes you'll see it develop from week to week. So thank you very much. I'll see you again.